it. I'm so passionate about helping businesses grow and you absolutely have to market to grow your business. Give it all you got. The best is yet to come. Hey everybody. <laughs> it's me, Tiffany from OMH Agency, and I'm here with Jessica Baldwin from Billings 365. Hey Jessica. Hi. Thanks for coming. Um, and thanks to everyone who's joined us here on the call. A little bit about Jessica. Um, she's the founder and owner of Billings 365, like I just said. Uh, she's been successful in building an engaged audience around things to do in Billings. Uh, the brand distributes content through it throughout multiple channels, including Billings365.com, which I think a lot of us have seen. Um, a lot of us are huge fans of. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of fans out there. Not, I don't know if I talked to anyone who hasn't heard of it and used it to know Good. what's going on. And I know Jessica always tells me, she's like, if anybody thinks that there's not anything going on in Billings, <laughs> they're crazy. So be sure, if you feel that way ever, uh, be sure if you're, if you're from out of town and you want to come visit Billings because it's such a great place to be, make sure that you go to Billings 365. It's super um, and so she distributes there as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and an e-newsletter to deliver the message to the audience uh, wherever you're, wherever you want to consume it. So uh, Jessica works with Billings 365 advertising partners to similarly utilize Billings 365's multiple channels to marry content marketing with traditional online advertising to create engaging digital campaigns. I kind of gave you a mouthful of stuff. To That's say awesome. <laughs> I'll take it. I, I totally agree with it. So I'm really excited. And today we're going to talk about content. Um, I, I talked to Jessica ahead of time about this uh, probably a couple weeks ago. And she's like, oh my gosh, we get to geek out about content. <laughs> yes. So, um, uh, so can you first just kind of tell me what does that mean to you? Content. Content. So content to me is any kind of information you're going to put out to your audience. So um, content can include your traditional advertising. Um, but I, I think that in the sense that we're talking about it, it's more about like the online content that you're, uh, creating, whether that is for your website, um, for your Facebook, um, photos for your Instagram, um, videos that you're putting out on YouTube. Um, all of that, uh, is your content and all of it should be part of your content strategy, your e-newsletter. Um, and as a publisher, you know, anything that you're going to do with some, a uh, third party media entity like a Billings 365 or, you know, the other traditional media that you work with, thinking about the content that you're using for that purpose as well. And content can really be text. It could be mm-hmm. like writing an article. It could be what you write for your social media posts. Yep. As well as images and video. And I think what we're going to talk today, if I if I understand it correctly, is like how to strategize. Because mm-hmm. you were mentioning that a lot of people just kind of fly by the seat of their pants, but you're able to really hone in on a, on a campaign mm-hmm. and really see the difference between just like, oh, this is what we did today. Right. And like, okay, these are the things that we're going to be posting, but then maybe integrating some things that happen on the fly. Yep. So I feel like there was, that we've kind of, you know, social media and um, your digital online presence, we've kind of come from this place where for a while we were talking a lot about like the frequency at which you should post and, um, you know, sharing articles from other sources on your page to show that. And I think we're kind of coming around a bend where um, that kind of stuff isn't working as much. And you really have to be thoughtful about, you know, every time you post something, you're garnering for your audience's attention. And so you want to make um, whatever kind of content that is, you want to make it worth your while to produce and you want to make it worthwhile for your audience to consume. And so if it doesn't meet those criteria, then maybe it's not a good post to make. Sure. So it's less about like posting five times a day and more about thinking really thoughtfully about the content that you're you're going to put out on each media that you choose to engage with. Okay. And I know I haven't asked you any of the questions I told you I was going to ask you, yeah. but just kind of, just to kind of build on that, can you give an example of what you mean? Cause I imagine a business owner being out there and going, I don't even know what that means. Like okay. I am building sprockets and what you're saying is content and right. like it sounds really, but it's really not. It's really kind of doing what you're already doing, mm-hmm. but then like being deliberate about how you communicate it. So could you maybe um, use an example? You don't have to name names or you can name names, but of a program where you're like, for example, because I think it's easier for a lot of us just to go, here's our strategy, here are the days, here, mm-hmm. um, and then it's a machine, you know, then it's a process, but you can still work that in. 
However, kind of how you're explaining how to do it, I think, how can, can you give an example? Well, I'll give kind of a generalized example. And we've all seen this kind of stuff come across our own personal news feed. And we're seeing less of it now because the algorithms are taking that kind of stuff out. But, um, you know, uh, accounting firm, perhaps uh, putting out an inspirational quote that's on a picture of a cute cat or something. Mm -hmm. Does that actually speak to the business that you are and the audience that you're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, perhaps it would be better to not think like, oh, I got to get a post up today. So I'm just going to put something up that I think people might like and think through like, what are the frequently asked questions of my accounting firm? Mm -hmm. Is there a way that I can take that content and make that into a series of um, blog posts Mm -hmm. or a video series on Facebook or Um, on my YouTube channel or in an e-newsletter. Maybe I send that out to my subscribers. And I just think that that process yields better results for both you and for your audience. And, you know, your audience, when you put out stuff that's not authentic, um, they start to get numb to it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just think it's a a waste of everyone's time if it's not thoughtfully created. It's It's a good way to get ignored. It's Basically. a great way to get ignored. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's really that is really helpful. Okay. Yeah. This is this is maybe it's not, I don't think it's off topic, but it's come up a lot this last week for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just want to get your feedback about it. Um, so what about like I've seen a lot of effort, and not just from one company, but like from mm-hmm. several companies. All of a sudden, they're talking about like, oh my gosh, our filters on our images have to be the same, and like how much. Um, you know, I know with Instagram, you look down a profile and, and there should be some continuity. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, going back to the cat, like if I'm looking at a at an um, accounting, you know, you do need to make it interesting, but probably a cat isn't a right. really good one. So you so even with I mean, I'm kind of off topic a little bit, but like so quotes would be appropriate, but it, it it would maybe be like why being mindful of your finances, you know, exactly. that kind of a quote. Right. But kind of offbeat back to the filters and, and that kind of thing. I mean. Is there a place for images that are on brand that deliver the message? Um, how much attention do you think should be spent on having exactly the same filters and things like that when it comes to social media specifically? Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, you know, I'll speak from my perspective. Um, we do try to keep a, a somewhat consistent um, feel to our uh, images for Billings 365, but that generally for us tends to be more topic specific. Um, you know, Felicia who works with me, Mm -hmm. um, has a little different style than I would, and she's much more talented with photography. So I know that my images are not going to match her quality of images, but our business is so on the fly that if I'm at a coffee shop or at a great restaurant, I don't want to miss the opportunity to post the content that I know my audience would find relevant Mm -hmm. in the moment that it's relevant. So I try not to let that, um, I guess that look that I'm, going for override Mm -hmm. my strategy but it it's i say it's different for every business sure um if i'm a boutique um i probably want to present a certain feel for my boutique um with images that are consistent and a quality that's consistent that's maybe different from what i need to do for billings 365 sure awesome okay well that was just on a on the fly question because like i said it's come up so many times so um now, okay, so we talked about, actually, this was exactly the questions that we talked mm-hmm. about. So what content is, a couple ways to apply content. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. What are a couple ways to apply content strategy to what we do every day? Um, so content strategy, I think, starts with defining your audience, just like all of our marketing should. Um, one of the things that I like to do is kind of write up a little customer persona. So take it further than like, um, you know, looking at, your demographics and you know the age the gender and all of that but going like a little step further and trying to think through like who your customer is so kind of writing out almost a paragraph about um what your customer looks like so for 365 it might start with something like i'm a person that enjoys unique experiences i am more likely to dine at a local hole in the wall than a a chain restaurant Mm -hmm. um i'm 
technically, or I'm generally considered the planner of the bunch and I'm always looking for new things to do with my friends. Something like that, where that can kind of guide your content strategy um, moving forward. So starting with your audience and then kind of considering what content they would want to consume. So you kind of have to reverse it from like, you know, when we're starting a business, we're taught to like write our mission statement and define all of our products and services. And then sometimes we can get stuck in that vision Mm -hmm. um, where we're coming from our end of things and pushing content out. But if you can think about your audience and like, what do they want to consume and how can I make my content match with that? Mm-hmm. I call it like pushing our, our agenda. Like right. a lot of times business owners have an agenda and yes. they're trying to push it. So that, yeah. Yeah. So, but kind is of that. Thinking what, and, and two, I always say too, like if you can think of a human that matches what you're saying. Right. So like what you just said, where you're like, here's a paragraph. This is generally what I'm like. So then like putting a face to it. Like, right. you know, I remember when I first started this business, I thought, okay, I want to talk to my audience. This is, you know, what that person wants generally. Mm -hmm. But then when I had an actual person who was the one that I knew was going to go to my website and look at it, I rewrote everything. Yes. And I feel like if, if only business owners, that's how they wrote their content was like, even if, and I have to do this all the time where I write it and it's like, oh, agenda. And then I put it through that filter. Like, oh, what if that person read it? You know? So right right along with the lines with what you're saying, but I always feel like if you could put like an actual human Mm -hmm. attached to it, I feel like we talk a little bit differently. Yep. So your audience, content that matches your audience, and then which platforms is your audience on? Where are you going to distribute the content to Mm -hmm. reach them? I think are kind of your, your, key pieces of content strategy. And, you know, 365 is a lot different. Like we don't offer, um, you know, uh, content services in the same way that OMH does. We're more of a publisher. So we work with advertisers to try to figure out, like, is there a way that 365's content can marry with the advertiser's goals? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and then how can we use our distribution model to take that content to our audience that our publisher has determined is part of their audience. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And again, like what you said about where does your audience go? So if you define it, like what you were saying of, you know, how tech savvy are they? What are their age group? Mm -hmm. How do they communicate? Are they very formal? Are they very relaxed? Um, And then going to the platform that Mm -hmm. speaks like that. So what is the naked, native, naked, what's the native language of that platform um, and then does that match up with the person that you're right. physically speaking to? Right. So, um, yeah, so as I'm asking qu- uh, questions of Jessica, be sure that you comment and share your questions as well. Um, this is a great opportunity to ask one of the top pros um, around there. So, uh, okay, so also, um, do you have an example of where you've used a strategy in place, um, where you used a strategy-focused um, approach versus just like flying by the seat of your pants where they were maybe flying and you were like, dude, like we're yeah. going to actually apply a plan here. <laughs> um, so Billings 365 is always, um, content strategy is like the central piece of our business. Right. So, um, so everything that we do is mindful of our audience. Cause we, you know, uh, our revenue is generated because we build an audience and then we, um, serve content to them and partner with advertisers to do so. Um, but one example I can think of is, um, Felicia and I were doing Billings 365 content for, uh, Montana fair. And we were like, how can we, um, get that animal side of, um, of the fair, um, to really go viral on Facebook. And so, um, Felicia actually mentioned, we should totally get Jeff, the nature guy to come and, um, Come and take us through a tour of the barn. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jeff's at Zoo Montana. And Jeff is at And, and Zoo if anyone Montana. watches um, Billings Local News, they've probably seen Jeff the Nature Guy yeah. uh, and his features. So and what he, a great idea. He probably wouldn't appreciate me telling everyone this, but you put <laughs> Jeff the Nature Guy in a piece of content and it does amazing. Like, okay, yeah. The community loves him. And so that was a, a situation where we really thought um, very carefully about like, who is the fair's audience? What are the fair's goals? We want to showcase the animals and that part of the fair, because oftentimes that can get overlooked. You think of like the rides and the food and the games and whatever. Um, And the fairs are really important or the animals are a really important part of the fair. So they really wanted to give that some love. And that was by far like probably our best video that we did 
um, with Montana Fair, and it just went huge. Oh, very good. Yeah. Very good. And I'll just add, too, I mean, this is probably a shameless plug, but um, Felicia is with Benton Media. Mm-hmm. Um, she actually does our video content, um, so most of it as yeah. well, she and um, Kyle. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's awesome. That's a really good example, too, that, you know, once you really – um, you know, keep it personal, you know, mm-hmm. so it's not like this contrived, I mean, it's a little bit contrived, but like, it's, it's like this fun yep. connecting people kind of a, mm-hmm. but it's still a campaign, you know, so you're yeah. able to plan it, but yet keep it really connected. And the other thing we knew about the fair is that fair food is a huge driver to get people to the fair. And so we did stuff like um, a video where we did a taste test of like mm. one of the new fair foods. And what was it? Um, the Reuben at Rude Boys um, food truck. Okay. <laughs> and it was. was it good? Oh my gosh, okay. it was amazing. Like I'm like, where's Rude Boys now? Yeah. <laughs> where are they parked? I will go there. So awesome. Yeah. So, so you did a taste like test, that. and which which really speaks to the whole idea of. What do people already want to see? So you're not just forcing stuff, again, bringing our agenda and yeah. going, we really want them to care about animals. Yes. You know, we're going, hey, what do they care about? How can we suck them in? And then we also have content that is on brand, mm-hmm. but is equally as exciting, but maybe that they might have other overlooked if you hadn't kind of sucked them in with this whole, right. like, I know you guys already like food. So let's, right. let's talk about that. So yeah. awesome. Well, that's really good. That's a really well, good. Well, and I think the other thing is it doesn't have to be like production can be important if you choose to make production important in your content but it's not that the content has to be complicated but it does have to be thoughtful okay okay yeah okay that's really that's actually a really good nugget right there yeah so um okay so and then what is a process that a brand can use to create a strategy to get the most out of the content that they create? Because again, mm-hmm. I mean, and that actually was a really good example. I think a lot of people, um, because I I personally think on social media, it needs to feel like nobody planned it. You know right. what I mean? It needs to feel like, oh, wow, they're fun and cool. Like that was spontaneous. Yeah. But there's a lot of planning that goes into it. So mm-hmm. um Again, like um, thinking about just small businesses or even big businesses, and they're they're so focused on day to day operations. So I feel like to kind of pull themselves out and go, okay, so how can I seem mm-hmm. off the cuff? But really, I'm trying to I'm trying to plan something here. Right. What's a good process that you would say would help a, a maybe a small business owner who's like I have, you know, a marketing person that does mm-hmm. this for me, or I do it myself. What's something that you would recommend for them as far as going into this with a strategy mind um, with regards to content? Um, I think just like I mentioned before, sitting down and thinking of like who your audience is and then what are some ways, I mean, your frequently asked questions for most businesses is a great place to start, but is there a way you can make your answers a little more interesting than your FAQs that you have on your website, (laughs) you know? Um, And then, you know, I think there's, a lot of opportunity to use the same content, but in different formats. So you don't feel like you're always having to like, think of like, what's the next thing that I can make huge. Right. Right. So, um, perfect example is what you're doing exactly with this chat and grow. You're, um, allowing a live session where people can ask questions, but you're also recording it where you can use it for video. Um, and also as a podcast. So you're making a lot of use out of one piece of content. It's called optimization. optimization. Anyone who's heard my whole lecture on like what optimization is, it's using, taking an asset and absolutely sucking the most out of it that right. you possibly, well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And you do that very well too, I have yeah. to say. <laughs> so we've done that with, um, with a few pieces of content. We did a series um, with one of our uh, presenting sponsors, who's Liz Francis with North Acre Real Estate. <laughs> Shout out for her. Um, but we did a whole moving to Billings series, things you should know if you're moving to Billings. And that started as blog posts. And we've then taken those blog posts that did very well and turned them into videos okay. um, and put visuals with that. So we're, we're getting to distribute that content Because I think the thing we think is that we put content out and everybody saw it already. Mm -hmm. But the truth is only a portion of your audience saw it. Right. It's a a micro moment, especially with with, uh, social media. um, Anyway, let's kind of jump over. Um, Rye uh, brought up a good question. With such a variety of categories, how do you make sure you have a voice among your advertisers? Do you want to take that or... 
With That's such-, such a good question. Um, and I feel like social media is such a noisy space. Yes. And so, um, and advertisers, um, and Rai, if you're listening, um, I'm wondering, are you talking specifically about um, social media advertising or uh, content on social media or what what kind of platform of advertising? We'll kind of speak to it generally, but um, if you want to maybe uh, just elaborate on that a little bit about what... Um, you know, advertisers, if we're actually specifically talking about advertising or content in general, I'm going to talk about content in general and, and kind of defer to you as well. Um, but, um, hold on real quick. Hello, everyone. (laughs) So officially the OMH spectrum, I would like to say it's spectrum went down (laughs) For the whole office. So we had everybody scrambling and we're really excited to be back. <laughs> um, so, okay, lost video and audio feed. Okay, so um, okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about Rai's question. Um, so, okay, so Rai was specifically talking about brand clarity. Uh, I see on the website that Billings 365 is presented by a number of sponsors and advertisers. How do you keep a target demographic in social media with a variety of different events, advertisers, um, sponsors, focusing on other targets? Um, That's a good question. Yeah, so for us, it kind of comes back to who that advertiser is trying to reach. So we kind of try to keep our content on entertainment and recreation as best we can. And so most everything will be event based, um, restaurants, um, basically things to do in Billings. And so a lot of our advertisers are event advertisers who um, want to reach people who want to go to events. But but then in the case of um, North Acre Realty, for example, um, you know, they're trying to reach potential home buyers. And just because. our audience is speaking to people who want to go to events doesn't mean that it's not also a potential pool of home buyers. So we do take um, opportunities to work in some specialized sponsorships like that um, with North Acre and Infinity Homes. You know, they're trying to reach that demographic of um, young 20 and 30 somethings who uh, may be buying a home. And also, you know, some businesses want to be associated with content that's a little more exciting, maybe, than um, what their (laughs) day-to-day business has going on. Um, And so we try to find creative ways to make content that fits our audience, but also fits them. And so for 365, we do get a lot of um, transplants to Billings telling us that um, our website is one of the first things they found Mm -hmm. when they were... Um, trying to figure out what to do in the that local market. Yes. <laughs> and so Alex, my son here, Alex, he's our audio guy. He's got his little headphones on and she's talking about, he's like, yep, that's what I did yep. too. And he's, you know, yep. early so, 20s. So. <laughs> so, you know, for a realtor, that's an audience that they, they want to get in front of um, and be the first real estate company that, or home builder in the case of infinity homes that you're going to see when you're researching your new home. So and to speak even more to it, kind of outside of Billings 365, like as someone looking in, some of these opportunities are really tough to break into because, mm-hmm. I mean, don't you kind of, I mean, for one, you have to be really creative. So if you came to Jessica and you are not, you do, you're not like have a bar or a event or some kind of music venue or something, mm-hmm. it's tough to think of a really good way to be relevant because she's not going to just go, oh, you want to reach that audience? Great. Well, you can just have, like, you can't, you have to, I mean, you can advertise, but yeah. you can't, like if you're, if we're talking content marketing and Rye speaking to kind of what you're saying, um, like how do you break out? Because if you're just advertising, I mean, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, it's, it's kind of tough. It's like being a billboard among a lot of billboards. And so, you know, you have to be creative. And mm-hmm. so no matter what area you're doing it, one, be on brand um, and, and be in the right spot. So if you're trying to reach them, you can still do it. But you have to be creative and you have to get scrappy and you have to kind of back what you're trying to do. So, you know, for example, like we were in Billings 365 and I'm like, well, marketing, I mean, like, you know, there's nothing we do that's super exciting. And <laughs> we, you know, we don't yet have parties here or anything like that, but we will maybe. But um, 
but so, and I was like, I love, I love Billings 365. So I just wanted the cool factor. And so we, um, Lindsay, who used to be here with us, she and I did the burger thing where we mm-hmm. went and tried out weird burgers, which mostly they were just good burgers. So, um, you know, just something, and I'm a foodie. So at the end of this, we actually have a food question at the end of all of our interviews. But, um, so for me, um, you know, if you listen to Gary V, you know that he wants to buy the jets. Does that have anything to do with marketing? Um, yeah, because everything does. However, he works it in because that's him. And mm-hmm. and in our world, like if anybody knows me, if they've been to one of our meetings, you've probably heard us talk about food and where we ate and why we liked it and why we didn't. And so what's on brand for you might look a little bit different. So like, it, let's say you're an accountant and you're a cat person mm-hmm. and no one's ever been to your office and not been like, wow, this is a cat person. That would be on brand. That Yes. In so, that case, that accountant can yes. post cat pictures of the cats in their office so as far (laughs) as standing out in the crowd I feel like you just you have to get out there and you have to go how can I you know how you approach getting into Billings 365 and stand out is the same approach that you're going to take to stand out in social media because same thing it's like I mean if you're a real estate agent if you're in marketing at all in any facet it's hard to stand out above if you're a publisher. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's a lot of industries. Now, there's a lot of industries where if you want to break out in social media and no one else in your industry is doing it, um, you're going to be a rock star. Like, you could pretty much just, like, have a good strategy and you're going to be a rock star. But there's a lot of industries. um, So, right, kind of speaking to what you're asking, I mean, there's a lot of industries where it's very difficult to stand out among your competitors um but that's and i think talking one is coming here and asking questions it's a huge first step in getting that edge um and then also um you know having a pro that you can work with that can help you develop strategy and help mm-hmm. you find what stands out like we were at biz to biz the other day have you um okay natalie if you're here i haven't looked at the at the guest list yet but natalie if you're here hi i'm going to talk about you for a minute um so we were at biz Mm-hmm. And um, have you met Natalie with Norwex? No. I've never been exposed to Norwex till now, and, and I love it. But that's a whole different thing. But so Natalie has a huge, amazing personality. And you cannot watch her without just just sitting and just going. Like, I'm pretty passionate and get excited. But still, when Natalie talks, I'm like, you know, I just like watch her because she's <laughs> so funny and, and just hysterical. So she's talking about, like, how do I stand out? Like, everyone's trying to sell Norwex. Everyone's trying to sell something. And so I'm like, um, be on video, like have a friend, just grab, a, you know, their, your phone and just video, t- you know, record you. But I think just knowing what medium you're really good at. Mm-hmm. So if someone's a good writer, you know, if you're, again, we were picking on accounts today. I don't know why, but you know, um, again, you know, right. We love you, by yeah, the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm really appreciating accounts right now. So. <laughs> and, you know, so there's really no boring industry. It's just a matter of, um, developing your brand and knowing your audience. Like, right. I don't know why I went on that whole rant, but <laughs> good question, Rye. So don't be afraid to ask questions. I will try not to do that every time. <laughs> so I have another question for you. Um, let's see here. How? Oh, yeah. This is this is a huge one I have for you. Mm-hmm. Um, what results do you measure when you're figuring out figuring out the success of a strategy or a campaign? So when mm-hmm. you're starting it out. I know you set goals and you're like, this is what we want. So what kind of metrics are you kind of looking at? Well, that kind of depends on each. For us, it's with our advertisers or, you know, a campaign that we're doing for ourselves. And so it really depends on each business and their goals. You know, every time you put out a a marketing campaign or an ad, um, hopefully, you know, you have some goal in mind of what you're trying to do. And so um, for a lot of the stuff we do with 365, that is just a brand awareness piece. They want to make sure that we're creating this content and then people are actually seeing it. So we do, of course, measure, you know, the amount of views, the amount of engagement we've gotten on the piece, comments and stuff like that. Things that the advertiser wants to see that they know that it's um, engaging content. But at the end of the day, you really want people to come through your doors, right? And patron your business or whatever. And so we will have advertisers tell us that, you know, we did that gallery preview of, you know, Heritage Home Tour, for example. We did a little photo gallery preview um, of the homes that would be on the tour, just showing enough to get you interested, but not showing it all so you didn't need to go on the tour. And they said, um, you know, that one change that they did between um, the previous year and that year 
was that gallery and that they saw an increase in attendance. And so that's the kind of stuff we like to hear. We don't always get that kind of feedback from our advertisers because sometimes they're they're not measuring on their end. Um, and it really does take a cohesive effort to make sure that um, that 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 physical action is happening, mm-hmm. not just the online exposure. But so it really th- depends on which you know, what you're after. Yeah. Well, and I guess the takeaway from that is probably it's super important as a business owner that you have, or as a marketer, that you have an idea of what your goal is. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes to you and they don't have a goal, you know, there's not, you know, like you have your metrics, but then like who cares, right? Because they're going to be, they're going to think like, how will they know if it worked or not? If they're, if they don't have a goal, like this is, I want more people on the tour, Yeah, you know? And so the other um, piece of that I would mention is that it's all cumulative, right? So um, I think content works best when there's some consistency um, and you're making a concerted effort. And that might be across multiple platforms, but it all comes together to drive the result. I'd say like there's rarely just like I'm going to put out this one piece of content and that's going to get people like banging on my door for my business. Um, That viral, amazing piece of content is kind of a rarity, I would say, but it all works together um, to kind of build up your brand and build up your authority in your industry um, and work together to drive those results for you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It's very good. So, um, again, feel free to ask questions um, out there. I have more for you. So, um, is there just one thing, um, if there was just one thing that, um, that, you, that a business could do to improve those results, what would it be? I, I want to actually rephrase this question. Like, if you were the boss of them mm-hmm. and you could just make them do something to get better results, what would it be? Um, I think the, this, the single biggest thing that I think that businesses don't do, which we've already talked about, is thinking of that audience, like really defining who your audience is so that your content is matching what they want to consume. Like not just pushing stuff out, but really thinking about that, that end user, I just think is the key. Mm-hmm. So if um, you're the boss of them and you made them do that, they would get better results just from doing that one thing. I believe I so. Think so. Because, I totally agree with you. <laughs> because I feel like I see a lot of the other way mm-hmm. happening. And it's not it's not any um, people are doing the best that they, oh, they exactly. feel they can, but I like think they're not can, losers for doing it. No. Because at least they're doing something. At least like, they're doing that's, something. That's a winning thing is trying. But, yeah. but, but if, if you, you can make them do one more thing, then that would yeah. be it and they would get better results. Yep. If you could just shift your perspective just a little bit, mm-hmm. um, I think it would work. And the other thing I see in um, in 365's world and working with an advertiser is sometimes trying to want like trying to put um, the entire kitchen sink I'd say into one piece of content Mm -hmm. where it's like um, you know we have these three departments and all three departments have to be included in this one video that we're doing whereas it's probably better to break that content out into three little pieces that talk about each department or each service that you offer instead of feeling like well I'm hiring someone to do this business So, um, or to do this piece of content. So I want to make sure I cram everything in so that I am getting the most bang for my buck. And you probably aren't going to get your best bang for your buck in doing that because it kind of missed the mark completely. Yeah. Like it's like you're trying to do everything. Who's going to connect with that? Right. It dilutes you. Like you think about it as a business owner, if someone threw you 13 things, would you, you'd be like, I'm shut down now. Like that's, that's all my... Yeah. I don't want to hear about it anymore. Right. Whereas if someone was speaking to you on one issue that you're having right at the moment, right. you're like, oh, you have my attention. Like, yes. I just ran into that. What, you know? Yeah. So sometimes you- we still think of it in the terms of the 30 second commercial. And I want to tell you all the things that I do. But really, if you just tell me about this one service that you offer, mm-hmm. like. Well, and how it affects you. Yeah. So instead of talking about the service, talk about like, what are you going to get out of it? So, right. you know, I don't know. It just goes back to asking really good questions. And like, yes. I have like 20 questions for you now. I'm thinking like of examples, but I'm, I'm going to, re- we have a question from okay. someone else. So, so let's do that. So Taylor here at our office, she wants to know, Jessica, how do you define billing, the Billings 365 audience? Just everyone in the city of Billings or does it get more specific or I'd like to add even more general than that? Yeah. So, um, we're more, um, when I think of our audience, it's more behavioral. So it's people who are looking for things to do. So we don't necessarily define it as a certain age group, but our analytics show us 
that the ages that we reach are um, 25 to 35 is our primary, and then 35 to 45 is secondary, and then we have lots on the outliers, and it skews female. So these are things I know, but that's not necessarily the way that I um, define my audience. It's more that, um, you know, they're looking for unique experiences. It's people looking for unique experiences, events and things to do. And so we cater our content back to that behavioral um, profile more so than like age and demo, because Mm -hmm. we know that lots of people over the age of 50 access our website to find events and new places to go out and eat and all of that kind of stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and um, I kind of to get your feedback on this, but I feel like I hate having to sell to someone that isn't, you know, like I'd rather go to the people who are already looking for it than have to like create an exactly. audience. And yep. so in speaking to the demographic side of it, even though your story is to anyone Um, Do you find yourself where you're going, I already know that women are looking for it, so I'm just going to go to where they're at and speak to them because I know, like, that's an easy sell. Mm -hmm. Because even though men are looking for things too, who you, I mean, I'm always in the passenger side looking for what restaurant we're going to eat, where where we're going to eat, or is there something going on this weekend, or, Mm -hmm. and not that that's the case for everyone, so it kind of goes back to that. However, um, your your stats Mm -hmm. are consistent with that. And so if you're saying, well... I mean, as far as percentage of who you're speaking to, do you kind of scale based on that? And I think this is helpful for other businesses, too, because, um, you know, there's a lot of businesses, I'm sure, where it's like, yeah, we help everybody. But if it's women who are the ones who are doing the research on it or if it's men who are, you know, like I want a shelf, but my husband's the one who's going to go look for the parts, you know. And so even though I'm going to make the final decision on what I like, you're going to speak differently knowing that he's the one who's going to be like in front of the thing going, I'm the one buying it right yeah. now, but I'm the one online, you know, looking right. for it. So, yep. So, yeah. So it kind of depends on who the advertiser would be and what their goals are. If, um, if we had someone, for example, like a recreation, um, uh, shields or uh-huh. the base camp, a uh, recreation, um, equipment provider or whatever, we might try to, um, not that women aren't into that stuff, because we know that and we're in Montana and <laughs> everybody shield, is. And that's so fun. <laughs> like, who doesn't like shields? <laughs> but we might try to make, you know, a series on hunting that speaks to males a little bit more. And then rather than thinking of just our website as the place that that content gets distributed, um, we might, you know, target that more. We might put a little bit of a paid post on Facebook to ensure that we're reaching our male audience that already likes our page um, and working with the advertiser to do that. Or, you know, letting the advertiser also use the content that we create on their own social media so that we're making sure that we're producing good content that makes good sense for Billings 365, um, but it's also reaching the audience that the advertiser wants to to reach. Well, and on the flip side, I mean, I we help, uh, we work with a uh, fly fishing guide, mm-hmm. um, Chris Fleck, in at uh, Stillwater Anglers in Columbus, and I know for him, he's like, I really, I mean, the women are a growing market Mm -hmm. and I really want to reach out to them. So I think also you can use demographics when you're developing your um, content and like what you're going to say based on where you want to grow. Yep. And then how you speak to that group. I think segmenting is probably a good um, strategy to use when developing content for that reason. Because sometimes you're like, okay, I want to talk to this group because they're already sold. Yeah. And then, but I really want to talk to this group, but you'll talk, like if I was saying, for example, I'm a woman who wants to learn how to fly fish and how someone's going to talk to me about fly fishing is a lot different than some man who's been fly fishing for 20 years. And he already knows what all the flies are. I'm like, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't like, do I tie myself? Do I buy them? You know, so how someone's, it's like, could you give me the vocabulary first? Mm-hmm. And then, so it's like spoon feeding. And then you have, so I think targeting your content for the demographic, yeah. I think is So doing a getting it. started series of yeah. content or that kind of thing. And maybe it features a, a female who is learning. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. That's good stuff. Um, okay. So, um, uh, okay. I think I kind of asked you this already. So, but I'm going to, so I'm going to skip on. Is there anything else that you want to be sure that business owners, entrepreneurs, and brands know 
before we finish up. We still have, we have about five more minutes. So be sure if you have any questions and you're sitting there and you're like, hmm, 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 I don't know if I want to ask because Tiffany will probably geek out again. <laughs> um, don't be afraid. Now's your chance. You have five more minutes um, to submit your questions. But in the meantime, um, Jessica, why don't you share, like if there's anything else about content and strategy, not flying by the seat of your pants, mm-hmm. anything else that we've talked about today or questions that you think people yeah. might have that... So I think um, try not to be intimidated by it. It does, like I said, it doesn't have to be complicated. It just has to be thoughtful. So actually, take take a few minutes to sit down and think before you post. Um, I think is a good takeaway, and that you don't have to do it all yourself. There are lots of um, great providers who can help you, and you don't have to. You also don't have to get. Um, make it some big expense that's going to be difficult for you to maintain you can also you know look for the option to consult with an omh or benton media or plenty of other providers where they can maybe help you define that strategy um but maybe um maybe they're not taking on the ongoing management for you or you're going to them for like a a bucket of content. Like I need help augmenting my content with really good content. Can you help me do that? Um, there's providers out there like that. And there's also other media, um, that are offering content. If you know that like a Billings 365 or Billings Gazette or Q2 reaches your audience, um, ask them what they have other than like a traditional media buy on their platforms. A lot of the traditional media are starting to do more content based, uh, packages and they they have creative staff who can help um, create that content for your business as well. And if you do that, make sure you ask them, can I have that content for my own social media too so that you can reuse it? Oh my gosh. And can I just say, if they help you and then you don't do what they say, I can't help you anymore. So hang up. <laughs> like, that's yeah. my biggest thing. I'm like, you'll sit with like, I'll sit with you and you're like, okay, this is what you should do. And I'm like, okay, like this is the area that I think you're just amazing at. And please tell me what you know. And then you tell me and I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to do my own thing. Yeah. And, and I especially see this with too many things in one, like poor graphic designers. I always like my heart just goes out to them because They'll go to, and, and I don't, this is like off topic, but yeah. it has to do with content. And I know that you run, I, I don't think there's a marketer who doesn't run into it because I build websites. And yeah. so, dude, I see it all the time where it's like, focus. What's one thing you want this person to yeah. do on this page and make sure that it's set up to do that. Yep. And then they're like, okay, except for that, I want 15 other things on there. And you're like, no, right. now they're confused. You yeah, know? focus. Focus is, I key yeah yeah and listen to the pro yeah. like or like it'd be like me going to the accountant because today's accountant day um and going okay so what should i do with my money or you know how do i um you know take care of this or that and then they're like do this and i'm like okay i'm not gonna do that like, yeah it just dry- and think about it like okay everybody on this call you have a business imagine that you get called to help and then you help and then um the person is like, no, I know how to do it better. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I think, I think every, cause I've been in a lot of industries and I've consulted a lot of industries and I've seen every industry go through the same thing. Um, but I think in marketing, um, because it touches every industry, mm-hmm. I think we can take our own advice when it comes to that and just take the advice of the pro. So, yes. um, yeah, well, awesome. Well, this was super helpful. Thank you so much for yeah, coming. Thanks for having me. This is cool. It was very fun to talk to you about all this. And, um, so next week, uh, we are, let's see, we have another chat and grow next week on Thursday. It's 11 o'clock AM mountain time. And we will be meeting with Kyle Benton from Benton Media. Nice. So we'll be talking about video in social media specifically. Um, there are so many amazing digital media people where they take photos and they do video. And um, I think our community is super rich in it. But across the country, no matter where you are, I guarantee that in your community, you have very talented people who know how to do it. Um, and so we're going to I've got a bunch of questions I'll be asking Kyle as well. So um, if you I would love for you to be on the call and right now start writing down some questions. Just have like a little sticky note where you're like, starting to add questions or open a Google Doc and um, just add to those questions so that um, when we open up, you use that time really well and ask Kyle um, and I questions specific to uh, a video in social media or anything else. So like if you're 
on Facebook and you look at an ad and you're like, oh my gosh, why would they do that? And so if it's completely off topic, you can 100% use this time to ask whatever question you want. If it's something that we need to just like screenshot and do, um, we'll do that as well. On November 9th, uh, Taylor and I are back and we are going to be answering questions that people have. Um, we will have demos that day too. So um, if you want to do this call on your phone, you know, we do Zoom um, and you can actually use Zoom on your phone. So if you wanted to get in on the call on your cell phone and then open your computer and actually use it as time that you can be, you know, pooping around on it. And then we can, um, you know, screen share and show you things. And if you have questions, but your questions, that's what we want to be answering. I mean, I can share with you what I get asked all the time. Um, a lot of them are the same questions. So I'm assuming that it's going to be helpful to a lot of people. Um, so that's what we've got coming up the next couple weeks. And um, we also have some trainings um, in person. If you're in the Billings area, we will be recording them so that we'll share them um, across the web through chat and grow. So anytime it has to do with training or anything like that, it is all going to be done through chat and grow. Dot com. Um, and so the live trainings, if you're interested in that, um, go log in to Chat and Grow and uh, just there's a Facebook um, comment area and you can comment with ideas and, and um, of, of topics that you want to cover. I know if you go to the uh, OMH agency Facebook page or if you go to the Chat and Grow Facebook page, I just put a post up of the ideas of the workshops that we'll be having here at our training center. Um, and so if you have any that you're like, please do that first, we're going to be prioritizing them. And without your feedback, it's going to be, I mean, your feedback is so valuable. So if you're able to comment and say, oh my gosh, yes, I want WordPress 101. Like I don't want to have WordPress 101 and everyone's going, oh, I want social media. I want to know how to post on social media in an hour. Um, so there's some really good topics that I think are going to be very helpful to people. Um, so this is your opportunity to help us prioritize according to what would be helpful to you. So that's it. Um, thanks to Alex Youngren, who is doing the audio for the podcast and the videos. Thanks to Taylor Hill, who is here on our team. She has been fielding questions and sharing them with us so that we're able to answer them. Uh, she also did a lot of physical running to make sure that um, we were back online <laughs> as quickly as possible. So thank you for your patience while that happened. And um, to everyone else who helped, and thank you very much to Jessica yeah, for thank coming. Thank you for having me. This was yeah. fun. Yeah, and thanks to everyone who attended. So peace out.